Hey there guys, welcome back to Mano Down Under. Today, I want to talk about Portal 3 Kingdoms, one of the most unique sets in Magic. I mainly want to talk about it because I've been meaning to get to this video for a while, I'm on holiday so I've got time to do it. And it's been in the news a lot lately for the Magic community. Um, mainly in regards to buyouts. Rudy did a video on it, talking about it. Um, but mainly people are going for the rares in the set. But overall the set is going up, there is a lot more popularity and interest in it because it's something most people don't know about. So I just want to talk about the history of it, I guess, um, go through what I've got and just things about the set because there's not that much information out there about it and I have a lot of questions I want asked or answered to and I'm hoping someone who watches the video might have the answers. So let's go into it I guess. Um, the set did come out in 99, I believe like May, it's a 180 card set so it's pretty small. Um, well I guess that's actually medium size. Uh, as you'll see here my cards are mainly common and commons but they're all graded, PSA 10s. Um, I do love the artwork. It was an Chinese, ancient Chinese history themed set um, with very unique design. So for example, you see here already the zodiac animals was a theme in the set. They're actually very sought after and collectible because they're often used as gifts for magic people. Um, but the printing was the most unique part about the set. It wasn't really released in North America. It did make its way into America as a whole, but it was released in simplified and traditional Chinese, um, Japanese, and it was printed in English, but very rarely. The only English printings were found in Australia and New Zealand, hence my home country. So it's kind of hard to find it. Um, oh, sorry, I got the burps. <clears throat> oh, sorry, that one there, the rat, one of my favorites. Great artwork, very simple, but cool. Um, so finding it is very hard in English. And in saying that, the print run for English is the main thing. No one really cares about the non-English print run because they're really common, they're quite easy to find, they're very cheap. The English ones are very rare. And the rarity, we believe it's between beta and unlimited. Some people say it's near alpha, I don't think it's that small. Um, I've got a ton of actual Beckett's here. These are the only ones I've got on Beckett's, I just got them as a gift. But they're still nines. So we've got the horse, the rabbit, great artwork there. Um, I do believe, yeah, it's between beta and unlimited. I think it's more skewed towards the beta side because it is very small. And if it's rare, it's collectible. And if it's collectible, it's investable. So there is money in Portal 3 Kingdoms. If you've ever looked up sealed products in Portal 3 Kingdom, oh, it will cost you an arm and a leg. Um, I do have a lot of lands actually graded. I think one of them is screwed up though on the actual PSA ticket. So it wasn't, yeah, wasn't really made for the English market. It was a different theme. It was to target a different market of people to try and get them into magic. But it might have worked, it might not. We're seeing it today actually with like global series decks like the Mu Yang Ling in Zhao or Jing, whatever his name is. Um, how it's targeted for not so much the Western market as to help get more people into the game. Um, I don't know, it'll be kind of rambling, but I've noticed a few things in the set, like in terms of card design, it was a little more simple, um, hence why they're trying to get into the new market. Like it had the traditional white border. Um, I'll get to. Oh, I'll just keep going these. They kept the card design simple, so there's no actual instance in the set, the old sorceries, but in saying that, there are a few that can only be played during certain times of the game, which are instant. Um, I'll have... Yeah, here we are. So here's my my best card, my only graded rare, actually. Uh, Relentless Assault. I think... Well, when I checked it last time, a few months ago, there's only three of these in the world at PSA 10. Any number below PSA 10 isn't accurate because people do crack them open. 10 is the most accurate number because you can't get any higher. Um, so in the card design, like I said, simple white border, simple text, but between the flavor and the actual card text they've got a divide there hopefully that's nice and sharp for you um they're kind of experimented within a few sets to help separate the two i like it i don't mind it myself the biggest problem was though the rarity symbols it's very hard to tell between a rare uncommon and common just the color within the outline of the set symbol is hard it, you can't tell you have to get really in there and have a good look um i'll just keep going through them while i'm talking i guess so different market unique simple rules for that new market um there are quite a lot of commons and commons in the set worth good money um we're talking like ten dollar commons and commons the lands are very sold after i think all the lands go for about oh hopefully that's not too blurry there we go all the lands go for about five bucks a piece um ungraded that is i don't know what graded cards are worth i have no idea because there's not a market for it it's very limited there's not that many trading out there so it's hard to price it while i'm going through i do have one question um, while picking up like raw cards and singles, 
I've noticed, and I'm not sure if anyone else knows, and that's what I want answered, are there two print runs in English? Because I've noticed there are some cards that are more glossy than others, like, I know it does happen in Magic where, depending on what factory they come from, depends on how the paper feels or the material. I don't have many blue cards you might notice, actually. Um, so I've got a couple commons which are more glossy than the rest, so I thought they were fake, but then I did the test, I checked the ink dots, actual like printing pattern, the bend, the light test, and they're real, like, they're real deal cards, but the gloss is just different, and it really threw me off. Um, I tried Googling it, have a good look around. I only found one Reddit post from way back in the day, like several years ago, and they talked about the same question, is it different printings? So I think there are a glossy and a non-gloss print, depending what factory they come from. As for finding out, hopefully someone watching this video knows, and if they do, let us know down below, it would be very handy. Make me feel a bit more reassured that I don't have fake cards. Um, Empty City Roots, a really cool card. Um, I remember when that got bought out and it went up really high to like $50, $70 one day. No idea what they are now, and that's an uncommon. It could be worth $2, I don't know, but great artwork as you've probably noticed while you're watching the video. Different theme altogether or not used to. You can see me in the camera. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just such an interesting part of Magic's history. I do enjoy the region locked sets and themes because they're very collectible in the long run. Um, but also, it's just a perfect event really when you think about it. It's scarcity in terms of the English language, it's different, people want it, it's got cool history to it. Um, and with Magic and all the people looking into the game in terms of investing in the value and the money in it, a lot more investors are coming in. So they're looking for new areas to invest into. And Portal 3 Kingdoms, I think, and I do agree with Rudy in this one, has been underpriced for a long time and kind of just forgotten about. And it's like he said in his recent video that um, a lot of players will see it and have no idea what it is and that's very true um in my area <coughs> my voice oh sound like puberty again um in my game shops and play groups and local players i see more alpha and beta than i do portal 3 kingdom even though portal 3 kingdom was released here it's very scarce still um <laughs> i've actually seen a few comments online a few american guys think that it's just everywhere here like it's abundant it's even then it's incredibly hard to find here and I've got such a big pile of this. Um, but yeah, it's the perfect storm. I think it's definitely an investable set. And hence why I've got a good few tens in it. Well, as many as I can get. But right now, I can't buy too many. So, and that's it. So, other things are in the set. I've got the good old two player starter deck. So, the set did these as like the learn to play deck. They did, um, themed decks but find the theme decks in English or like intro decks are very hard now um, the English ones are worth hundreds of dollars the non-English are actually very common you still find them they did normal booster packs and of course booster boxes which are worth a house at this point probably but I managed to get this on eBay through a local auction in eBay on Australia um, I think I paid I think it was $50 including postage for such a cool sealed part of magic history I'm pretty happy with that no idea what it's worth, like what will actually go for on the proper magic market. No idea. If anyone has an idea, let us know though. Um, as you can tell, that's a theme with Portal 3 Kingdoms. A lot of, no one really knows how much anything's worth because it's so rare and scarce. It, unless it sees play. And talking about play actually, oh and I'll just switch over my binder. It'll be one second. Oh yeah, sorry about that. That's just going to the binder. Yeah, so talking about play. Um, reprints do happen for the set because it's not reserve list, despite what a lot of people seem to think. It is not. Um, but it's a very hard set to reprint, so you can kind of think of it like pseudo reserve list. Um, they have printed a few odd bits and pieces from the set in Commander and I think Judge promos. Like we've seen Imperial Recruiter, 100,000 hours getting reprinted, stuff like that. But the original printing always holds their value pretty well, and I guess that's just due to the collectors and the scarcity of the product. So you can see I've got a lot of loose lands here, and this is when I noticed I'm not going to try on camera because my camera's not that great. But I noticed there was a glossy and a standard print. So if anyone knows about that, please let us know. But you can see I've got quite a few basics saved up. Um, with the set, funny enough, because of these, the two player starter decks, they have a fixed deck in them. Like there's two decks that are exactly the same no matter what you open. Because of that, I understand that the cards that appear in those decks are worth a little bit less because they are high quantity. Um, so actual non-lands here. So you can see it brought cool mechanics like horsemanship, 
while you're watching the video, try and tell the difference if you can from a distance. The common versus uncommon, it's nearly impossible. Um, they had like their own versions, Imperial Edict and stuff here. Um, their own mind rots and stuff, like different prints. But horsemanship, by today's standards, might as well just say unblockable. So it's a pretty good mechanic for commander players. Um, I just love the artwork. It was so cool and different for the time. Um, borrowing 100,000 arrows, a community favorite really. Um, the advisor, that's another expensive card, just because it's a unique creature type, a human advisor that can draw a card. So, I do have a couple odd bits and pieces, but yeah, I have a lot of questions. I only know so much about the set, so if anyone can fill in, it's mainly that glossy question. But, oh, I love it, it's so unique. I love vintage magic, so if I can get anything like this, I do. You can see I've got more exotic animals stored away. But it's something I definitely keep out an eye for when I'm trading or going to shops. Anything Port of Third Kingdom, I'm all about it. So yeah, in summary, it's a non-Western market product that was released in 99. Um, very small print run between Beta and Unlimited. Um, there is a lot of attention lately because the buyouts are mainly in the rare section, but that will move through the set. Um, we know grading's pretty cool for the set because it's very unique and old school. So, and there's not that many population report out there. A lot of the cards I showed today have population reports of um, probably four, some of like less than four. So, how many sets are out there? We don't know. But yeah, it's a cool set. It's very different. Not many players know know about it. So, if you have any more information that I haven't mentioned in the video, definitely mention in the comments because I want to gather as much as we can about the set just to make it a bit easier for everyone. So yeah, let me know your thoughts, guys, and have a good one. See ya. Alrighty, it's that time of the video where we can do a bit of a shameless plug. So thank you for watching guys. If you enjoyed it, please sub and like. It really does help the channel's analytics out a lot. Maybe consider joining me on my other social platforms where you can talk about anything and everything magic related. And special thank you to our patrons. They make the channel what it is. These guys are the building blocks for Mana Down Under. They support the channel in many ways. And if you'd be interested in supporting the channel, links are down below and at the end of the video. Thank you guys.